Hi there and welcome to the sixth in a series of videos on PFSense. And this video is all about DNS, how to configure it in PFSense and also how DNS works. So let's get started. Okay, right, let's start and talk about DNS and PFSense. So we probably all know what DNS is, means and does. But for anyone who isn't quite sure, DNS stands for Domain Name System and it translates a fully qualified domain name into an IP address where that domain resides. You can think of it a bit like a telephone book in a way. You look at someone's name and you get the number. And DNS is the phone book of domain names. Now, of course we have to have this because if I asked any of you what the IP address is for a website, 99.999% of us, we just wouldn't know what it is. So we need DNS to make the lookup in the phone book so we can dial in that site. And even if we were lucky enough to have some freaky memory where we could remember hundreds or thousands of numbers, we would still need DNS. Websites don't always stay at the same address. A website may move from one server to another, so a good DNS will track and update the website's new addresses so that we always land on the site that we want. So the DNS server which we use gives us the information which we need to get to the website etc that we're looking for. Now probably the most common DNS server that people use will be the DNS server provided by their internet service provider. All routers given out by ISPs will be set by default to use the ISP's own DNS servers. But of course we don't have to use them and many people choose to use public DNS servers such as OpenDNS or Google's DNS. But with PFSense we can do something a little different. By default it runs something called a DNS resolver. Now this hasn't always been the case, in earlier versions of PFSense the only option was a DNS forwarder. Now you may be wondering what the difference is between a forwarder and a resolver. So to understand that I think the easiest thing to do is take a look at DNS a little bit closer. OK, so there are two different types of DNS queries. Firstly, a recursive query, and secondly, an iterative query. So let's start with a recursive query. A recursive query needs one of two answers back. It either wants the name to be resolved or to be told that it can't be found. So let's look at a DNS client. Let's look at our PC. So say we want to do a search to find out about a favourite TV show on amc.com. How does the computer get us to that site? Well, it'll first check its cache, both the browser cache and the cache on the computer, and then it will check the host files for the name. If it can't be found, then it makes a recursive query to the DNS server. And as it's a recursive query, the computer's only expecting an answer back of basically yes I found it, or sorry, no I can't find that. So let's think of this DNS server as one of the public DNS servers, maybe Google's DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 so what does it do now it's been asked for the IP address of that site? Well, just as our computer did, the first thing the DNS server's going to do is it's going to check its cache and see if it's already got the record stored, and if so, it will return the answer. However, if it hasn't got it, then it will try and find out. So the DNS server will make another query to another DNS server. But this time, the query is an iterative query. This query can have different answers. It can either return the address, or it can say, no, I don't know what it is, but I know someone who might be able to help. Or it can say, no, I'm sorry, I don't know what it is, and I don't know anyone else who may be able to help. So basically, an iterative query doesn't actually have to return the result. It can refer you to somewhere else. So our DNS server here makes an iterative query to what is known as a root hint DNS server. Now this server will not know the answer. Its job as a root hint server is to refer only to the appropriate authoritative servers in the internet top level domains, or TLDs as they're known. And TLDs are things like .com, .org and .net etc. So our DNS is asking for amc.com, so the root server will refer us to a .com DNS server. However, the .com DNS server will also not know the answer, but it will be able to give us some information that will help. 
it will refer us to the authority DNS server for amc.com. And this DNS server will know the answer for the domain we're looking for. So we'll return the result to the DNS server, which will then complete the original recursive query back to the computer. And the DNS server will cache this address, as well as all of the steps it used in obtaining this address. So if another computer asks for it, then it can return the answer without having to ask elsewhere. But also, if it was asked to resolve another .com, which it didn't have a record of, then it wouldn't have to ask the root hint server, as now it knows of the .com DNS name server from before, so this time it would only have to ask the .com server, which would then point it to the authoritative DNS server for that domain. So basically that's how DNS works. So let's get back to PFSense and what the difference between a DNS forwarder and a DNS resolver is. So a forwarder does exactly that. It forwards requests to a DNS server for the answer. And a DNS resolver on the other hand works down from the root hint server resolving names itself. So it's far better for our PFSense router to use resolving for DNS as opposed to forwarding it's much more secure. You're not likely to get fake DNS from any kind of man in the middle DNS attack. Okay, so I think the DNS resolver is the best choice, but PFSense supports forwarding and resolving. So let's look at the DNS settings in PFSense. Let's go to System, General Setup, and then let's scroll down and here we can see a section DNS Server Settings. And here I've added the Cloudflare DNS servers but these are only used if we're doing DNS forwarding. The resolver doesn't actually use these. And underneath that here, we can see DNS server override. And this allows us to override the DNS servers at the top here by the DNS provided through the WAN from your ISP. Now, if we don't want that to happen, we just uncheck this tick box. Now, if we click on the services, that's where we'll find the main DNS settings. And you can see here, here's the DNS forwarder and the resolver. And the DNS resolver, if we look here, is the one that's enabled by default on PFSense. However, let's quickly just go back to the DNS forwarder a moment. But I'm not really going to go through anything here on this page. I'm only going to look at one thing at the bottom, and that's the custom options. Now, the reason I'm looking here is just in case on the off chance someone's running an old version of PFSense, and they're also running on RAID. Well, Unraid recently supports HTTPS, and for this to work properly, we have to add in a custom option here, which tells the DNS that the domain unraid.net, which resolves back to a local IP address on our LAN to access the server, is safe, and it's nothing to do with the rebinding attack. So we just add here rebind hyphen domain hyphen OK equals forward slash unraid.net forward slash. So with this added, you could use the DNS forwarder with HTTPS and Unraid. It's very similar to what we put into the DNS resolver in an earlier video. So just click save and of course apply changes. Okay, so that's all I want to say about the DNS forwarder. So let's go to the DNS resolver and have a good look through here. Right, so the first option here is obvious, basically whether you want the DNS server to be enabled or disabled. Then next, the listening port. The default port is 53, which is what DNS uses, so leave that as it is. And next, the network interfaces. These are the network interfaces that the DNS resolver will listen on. Leave that as it is on all. And the same for outgoing network interfaces. These are the interfaces which the resolver will use to query the authoritative DNS servers. Although that's normally just only going to be WAN, we'll leave that on all. And again, system domain local zone type. That should be left as transparent. And the DNSSEC support, that stands for DNS Security Extensions and helps prevent things such as man in the middle attacks and that should be left on. Now the next setting here, the enable forwarding mode, if we check this mode here, then DNS queries will be forwarded to the upstream DNS servers that we have defined here. So unless you specifically want to be forwarding to external DNS servers, then leave this unchecked. Now these next three settings are very similar and I think very useful. And if this is checked, any host names in the DHCP leases will be registered in the DNS. 
and the same here for any static mappings that we may have assigned, they'll also be registered in the DNS. And again, if you have any open VPN clients connected to us, we can register their host names as well. So let's click on save, then apply changes, and then let's test that. So let's look at the DHCP leases. And we can see here there's a static mapping for the Xbox One. So this host name should be registered now. So let's try pinging it. So I'm just going to type ping Xbox One. And we can see it's working, responding to the ping to the host name. Okay, so now let's look at the next setting here, display custom options. Here we can put in custom options into the DNS. And as in an earlier video, I'm going to list unraid.net as a private domain, because this domain actually resolves local IP addresses in order for me to connect to my unraid server by HTTPS. So putting that in here tells the DNS that this domain is safe and it isn't a rebinding attack. So any options you need to put in, put them in there and then click save. Okay, so let's scroll back down. And here at the bottom we can see something called host override. Now this is similar to what we're looking at here, the DHC registration and the static DHCP registration. If we click on add, then we can add our own host names to IP addresses to be resolved in the DNS. So my Unraid server, it's called Prime, and the domain is local domain, and its IP address is 10.10.20.199. And I'll give it a description. And a really cool thing we can do is we can add additional host names to the same IP address. So I could add main server, and again local domain, or I could even add media server, and then click save. And as always, apply changes. And so now I should be able to ping all three host names. Ping prime, ping media server, and main server. They all resolve to the same place. Okay, so let's scroll down again. And lastly at the bottom we've got domain overrides. And here we can map specific domains to IP addresses. This is similar to the host file on your computer. For example, if I wanted to try and stop my girlfriend going on facebook.com, then I could just put in its IP address as a loopback to be 127.0.0.1 and click save and apply changes. So now if someone were to try and reach Facebook, then it's going to say the site can't be reached. So I'd better delete that before I get in trouble. And now let's move on to the advanced settings. So here I'm not going to go through everything, I'm just going to go through the things that I think may be useful to change. And the first thing here is the prefetch support. So as you know, the DNS resolver caches all of its DNS results. But a DNS record is only good for its TTL, which is time to live. So if it expires, then the DNS resolver is going to have to look it up again. So what this setting does is it makes the DNS resolver look up that record again before it expires, so theoretically it can speed things up. And the next setting under here, the prefetch DNS key support, this can also speed things up as well. What this can do is it's in to do with DNS security extensions and it can reduce the time for validation checks. So it's worth checking this as well. Now let's scroll down to the message cache size. So this is the size of the cache for all of the DNS records. And by default it's set to four megabytes. But we can increase this and I'm gonna set mine to 20. And similar to the message cache size, if we scroll down here, we have the number of hosts to cache as well. So this is similar, but it's the number of hosts which can be cached. Now 10,000 is a lot of hosts, but if you've got a busy network or you just want to increase this for the hell of it, then just put this onto a higher number. And I'm gonna put mine to 20,000. So these are the settings that I think are useful to change. So after that, just click on to save and apply changes. Right, so that's it for the DNS settings. But there's one last thing that I want to take a look at before ending this video. And that's when people are using a VPN, worrying about DNS leaks. Well, when the DNS resolver gets a DNS record for us, it uses our actual online IP address. And so that's either our WAN address, or if PFSense is connected to a VPN and that's the default gateway, then it'll use the IP address of the VPN from which it's connected to. So my PFSense's default gateway 
is a private internet access endpoint on the east coast of the United States. So let's have a look at what my IP address is. And there we are, we can see that my IP address is 173.239.210.24 and this is my location of my IP. So this is going through the VPN. So now let's head across to dnsleaptest.com and let's perform the standard test. Again, here's the IP address. So let's see what our DNS is. And it's exactly the same because our DNS resolver is resolving through our own IP address. So you needn't worry about DNS leaks. So now you may be thinking, well, you don't use a VPN on your PFSense box. Or you do, but it's not the gateway that PFSense uses itself. And you're thinking you don't want your ISP mining all of your DNS queries and selling the data to a third party. Well, yes, PFSense is sending out its DNS queries over the IP address given to you by your ISP, but it's not using the ISP's DNS servers. Remember from earlier on in the video how the resolving works? Well, the ISP is only going to see you contacting root hint DNS servers and authoritative DNS servers, nothing else. So they won't be able to mine your data. But what happens if a client on our network is using custom DNS settings in its configuration? Because then it's not going to be using PFSense's DNS resolver. And we don't want that to happen. Or maybe we don't. So if we don't, then we can make a port forwarding rule to redirect all DNS requests to PFSense. So let's do that now. So let's go to Firewall, NAT, and Port Forward. And we're going to add a rule here. So we need to choose the interface it's going to run on. So I'm going to have mine run on LAN. And the protocol, we want to set it to TCP forward slash UDP. And for destination, we want to check invert match. And then select LAN address. This matching the interface here. And destination port range, we'll just put it onto DNS, which is port 53. And the redirect target IP, we want that to come back to the PFSense firewall. So we put in 127.0.0.1 and the redirect target port, again that's DNS and the description, let's call it force DNS and we want to make sure that that reflection is on disabled. Then when we're done, just click save and apply changes. Okay, so we better test this out now. So I'm going to go to my network adapter and I'm going to change my DNS here to the Google DNS and click OK and apply. So now theoretically, if this rule isn't working, when I go to dnsleaktest.com, it should show me using the Google DNS. OK, so the IP address is still through the VPN. So let's do the standard test. And we can see the DNS has been redirected back to the PFSense box. And so it's not using the Google DNS. Let's go back to our firewall rules a moment and I'm going to disable the firewall rule now. So now let's try the same test but with the firewall rule disabled. And we can see now with the firewall rule disabled we're using the Google DNS. So that proves that the firewall rule is working absolutely fine when it's enabled stopping me using any custom DNS's to find on any clients on my network. A very useful thing I think. Okay so that is the end of the video now. And I know for the last few weeks I have been promising to do a video on PFSense and connecting to various different endpoints using OpenVPN and private internet access. Now I'm sorry I haven't made it earlier, but I did think it was probably more important to do the videos in the order that I've done them. But I think it's getting to the time where we need to do this video next. So I'm either thinking of doing the video on OpenVPN and PIA, or maybe on firewall rules. So let me know in the comments which one you think I should do first. Well, anyway guys, I really hope that you did like this video and I hope you liked it enough to hit the like button and I hope you like the channel enough to subscribe. And again, I want to give a really big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and all my other supporters that I have who support the channel. Without the fantastic support that I receive from you guys, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. So I really thank you for that. Well, anyway guys, it's time for me to go now. So whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.